Good evening everyone, uh, welcome to my final policy review of the 2020 manifesto. I haven't gone through every part of it and the reason I'm going to stop at this one is because we're going to, as a party, change the manifesto over the summer. Now have a listen out for my podcast this weekend, it's just myself this weekend, but I want to talk you through the new manifesto how I want you to contribute to it. I will be issuing questions, but I also want you to contact me. I can't possibly know what your experiences have been. And we all have different experiences, so I want you to tell me things that you've experienced that are wrong, that you think we can improve, and the ideas that you have for improving them. I want us to have, we already have a completely unique manifesto. I want that to be our identity as we go forward. And absolutely, uh, a manifesto that that is so good that it shocks people and we've I, we had a, a, an email this weekend from somebody who basically told us just that um, so con do contribute over the summer and listen to my podcast at the weekend I'll tell you exactly how we're going to move this on okay so last issue is energy and the environment now I wrote most of this manifesto but I didn't write all of it this section was written for us by a, a very kind uh, think tank in Canada and they are uh, supportive of us and, and ideologically aligned with us and expert in this uh, and they produce this part of the manifesto for us. But before I go through it, I want to say a couple of things about this issue and it's one that I've come to care very deeply about and it's one that has, as I've learned about it, surprised me uh I'm, I'm i'm glad i've sort of been awakened to this it's been something of an awakening one of many that i've had politically over the last 10 or more years and it's it's let, let's separate let's separate first of all the hysteria from what we ought really to be concerned about now the hysteria is around what is a left-wing movement and as with all left-wing movements, its ultimate aim is destruction. Its ultimate aim is the destruction of how we do things now and to replace it with how they think we should do things. It is to bring down democracy, to bring down capitalism, to bring down the rich. And that is what always drives left-wing movements. And the climate change movement is no different. The change the dis disruption of the current global economy for example is is forefront of this uh bringing down oil companies uh, uh l large global companies like that is very much at the forefront of it but what the left wing climate change hysteria doesn't seem to realize is that actually big money is involved in the business the industry that has developed around their campaigning there is huge industry in building massive solar fields for example they don't work there is a huge industry around these appalling uh, bird killing uh, machine uh, that wind wind farms that that also don't work the climate change pretending to be green and environmental lobby is not actually looking for clean energy sources such as nuclear it is looking to change and transform the economy the energy the global energy economy uh, and big business much big business has gotten in on this and there's a good movie produced by michael moore of all people uh do watch it it reveals i'll put a link to it it reveals the truth behind the climate change industry the industry that is growing up around climate change campaigning it is a extreme left far left movement and because it is it has the support of the mainstream press because it has the support of the mainstream press it's making politicians uh jump around almost like puppets on a string as so many particularly politicians in europe and in britain particularly in britain in fact are puppets on the media's string and the media will get behind any left-wing campaign group whatever the reality is if its aim is to bring down western society and change the global economy then the mainstream press will get behind it as will the open border utopian lefties it really is a 
toxic mixture. And speaking of toxic mixtures, what is going on in the United States, the rioting that is happening in the United States, is also an extreme left movement. Nothing at all to do with police brutality, nothing at all to do with racial crime. And if the protesters in London really want to protest racist abuse by the police, then I wonder where they are every time it is revealed that police turned a blind eye to the gang rape of young girls because they were white and their attackers weren't. That's real racial abuse. That's a real racial crime with the police looking the other way. Not a word of protest then in London from this nasty little group uh, or any of their comrades, the nasty little group being Black Lives Matter. Same in America, what they want is to bring down the American administration, no less than remove an elected government. It's got nothing to do, certainly got to no, nothing to do with race-based crime because black on white crime in, in the United States is far, far higher than vice versa. The far left, make no mistake about it, the far left is on the march, literally, and it is making Western governments jump to its tune. Boris Johnson uh, even went out of his way to say how racism didn't belong in any society. Uh, well, you may agree with that, and most decent people would, but what he ought to have done is point out that racism goes in all directions, that white people are the victims of racism. There is no uh, disproportionate mistreatment of black people in this country and we are tired of hearing it. There is racial division, yes, and it's been stirred up by the likes of Black Lives Matter and the left-wing lying press which pushes any radical anti-Western agenda it finds. That's the reality of the matter and Boris Johnson or some Western leader ought to have the courage to say so but they don't, except of course Mr. Trump, who the Liberal Democrats are now demanding Boris Johnson condemn, turn on our closest ally over a lie and a sham whipped up by the toxic media. That's what the Lib Dems want. And that's why they'll never be taken seriously again. It's of course what Labour want as well, and also why they'll never be in government again. But getting back to energy and the environment, well, like I say, these so-called... Uh, environmental groups don't actually look for clean and effective ways of generating energy. They look for ineffective ways of generating energy and being stupid as they are, uh, they are propping up enormous businesses that they protest or they profess to protest against. We can have a useful and independent energy source and energy sources which are different from the ones we have now. We ought not to have the relationships with many of the countries that we do have energy relationships with now and we are far too dependent on other countries. We are also far too dependent on other countries you may have noticed during the coronavirus uh, crisis. Well we are still during the coronavirus crisis but we seem to be incapable of even providing basic protection clothing to our own medical staff. That's how dependent on other countries we are. And uh, wait for an upcoming speech from me on how to, uh, what changes we need to make to our economy post coronavirus. But we also need to make changes about our energy sourcing, where we source our energy from and where we get it from. And to stop pandering to this sham left wing movement that is exploiting and using children and frightening children. When I was a child it was the ozone layer and we were all going to die soon then too. They are literally telling children that we are all going to die soon. And that's this this much young much too much younger than her age, Greta Thunberg, at the age of eleven, had this pumped into her by teachers at school, and we know that teachers at school, especially here in the UK, or definitely here in the UK, are doing exactly the same things. They are able to protest, uh, dis destroy property and the police do nothing. They shut down central London and the police joined in. They're not doing much to stop 
uh, propeller, the things being propelled at Downing Street at the moment either. Left wing protests, fine. Right wing protests, I'm pretty sure social distancing rules would apply. But this, this is a sham and it's a sham that's taxing poor people. These green taxes are also a sham. This uh, manifesto will talk about the fact that climate changes. It changes. It always changes. But what the sham climate change movement has done is mix this sham in with real concerns about our environment, about our seas, about animal welfare, uh, about farming. These are real concerns. They are not related to the sham climate change movement. Plastic has revolutionised the world. It utterly changed the world. It made things far more accessible to people with less money. It raised living standards and uh, it, it made us more democratic in that for, the, for that reason. And I will be in my Sunday column next week. I'm going to write about how uh, plastic changed the world. But it also left us with a lot of promise waste problems. And we have uh, enormous amounts of rubbish, plastic in particular, flowing into our seas. And another reason I know that these climate change protesters are not too concerned about actual pollution is that you won't hear them or see them protesting much against the, lo the world's largest polluter, communist China. It does complain about the United States, but not so much about communist China. You also won't hear too much about the racism in China or state brutality in China. This is all reserved for capitalist United States. Communist China gets a free pass. And the reasons are in the 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 reasons are in the names I just used to describe those countries. Okay. So like with our other policies, quite long this one. Uh, like with our other policies, uh, or reading of the manifesto, I will read it uh, with some, but not quite so much, because uh, we'll keep these videos as short as we can so that people will watch them. OK, energy and environment. For Britain aims to develop environmental policy and legislation based on robust scientific evidence-based information. Imagine that. Imagine building a society on evidence and not on left-wing hysteria, backed up by a media and enforced by politicians who are terrified of the media. Imagine an evidence, science-based society. That's the one for Britain aims to build. It will aim to safeguard the quality of Britain's land, air and water for the health use and enjoyment of Britons for generations to come by balancing the best conservation and restoration practices. Now, here's, here it's, it's so simple. It's so simple and this is what I was talking about, the part of environmentalism we do need to care about. We do need clean air, we do, do need clean water and we do want healthy, clean environments to live in which is the next line in the manifesto. We want a clean environment, clean air, a clean countryside, clean roads and clean oceans. That is the basis of our vision for energy and the environment. Climate change is one of the biggest issues of our time, at least according to the mainstream media. The primary issue is the extent to which human activity in boiling coal, oil and gas, for example, is contributing to climate change and whether this is taking us towards imminent disaster. As I say, I didn't actually write this, but perfectly put. Uh, that is the primary question and it's the primary uh, dividing line here. It's where the lie exists. We may well be emitting more carbon dioxide, for example, into the atmosphere. But let's be clear about something. Carbon dioxide is not a poison. We are being taught, or it, at least it's we're being allowed to think that there's something terribly awful about carbon dioxide, like it should come with a danger sign on it. Uh, it, it, it's the, it is the source of plant life, uh, i.e. the source of life. <laughs> and it's, 
it's I remember as a child knowing in school that carbon dioxide was the, was a source of plant life, and so being confused as an adult as this sudden uh, oh dear we have all this carbon dioxide we're producing, whether or not that is contributing to climate change is the question. And the manifesto goes on, according to world governments, the United Nations and much of the world's press, we have only a matter of years to turn this around or face extinction. The hysteria. Media-driven hysteria to suit, to back up, to lend credence to an extreme left campaign, an extreme left ideology seeking to bring down the global economy and replace it with who knows what. The manifesto goes on. The, pla the climate of the planet changes and that has always been the case. To the extent to which humans influence this and what this means for our future is however up to if up for debate if debate were allowed. In reality it is not. The academic website The Conversation for example has banned articles from anyone skeptical of mainstream of the mainstream climate change narrative and once again this is part of the uh, alarm from from the perspective of someone who cares about debate and science and, and reality and, and and objectivity the lack of debate on this the lack of uh, allowing debate by the usual suspects too so your alarm bells ought to be ringing universities don't allow i've, I've, I've known of people who are not allowed to speak at universities are booked and then it's cancelled people who are uh climate change realists or people who have an alternative argument to make uh, to the mainstream media's climate change narrative. They're, they're not allowed to speak at university. Some have been fired. Uh, this, is, this, this ought to be ringing alarm bells immediately. And on the day that Greta, St. Greta, gave her speech at the United Nations, at the United Nations, uh, 500 scientists from around the world wrote to the United Nations telling them this is not true, the science on this is flawed, it is wrong. They were completely ignored. Nobody in the mainstream media reported on this. But Greta Thunberg was given a global platform. She was also given a global platform to speak about coronavirus. I'm not entirely sure what her expertise are, but we're talking about a younger than her age young girl and given a global platform purely because she's the right face she's white uh, unfortunately uh, but she is at least a, a girl uh, and she is saying all the right things and she will be given a platform for that reason she is pushing the the she is a childlike character pushing being exploited to push a radical left-wing agenda and therefore the press is all over it therefore the united nations is all over it and she's given this global platform while other people are banned or ignored and we're you know anyone who questions this is labeled in the media as a climate change skeptic in other words alone so be always be wary of that as well the United Kingdom is spending billions of pounds at home and abroad on the fight against climate change. Our government has imposed taxes and countless regulations claiming this will lower greenhouse gases. It is subsidising inefficient and costly green technology and restricts the crucial development of our petroleum resources. We must stop sending money to developing countries to help them reduce their emissions as they only increase their energy consumption in response. We must also abolish subsidies for green technologies whilst welcoming encouraging uh, whilst encouraging private investors to develop profitable and efficient industries. Last uh, sentence there, absolutely crucial. But the point about uh, using up increasing energy consumption in response is a crucial one. And what you'll see in the uh, Michael Moore movie that I will link to, what you'll see is, is left-wingers waking up to the fact that the industry coming up around the climate change campaign is actually even more environmentally friend unfriendly 
than 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 uh, uh, gas and oil. They 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 they. In other words, they're using up gas and oil to make these the wind farms, for example, use incredible uh, levels of electric. You know, it, it just have a look at the movie. And the reason I haven't mentioned its name is because I didn't actually intend to mention it, and I can't remember its name. Probably shouldn't admit that, but there you go. I will link to it below, however. The UK should also invest in nature conservation and restoration. Now, also crucial to knowing that the green lobby isn't green because they are, you know, you, you again, we heard Greta talking about ecosystems. Uh, none of which, none of what she said was based in reality. But ecosystems, we are looking at a world where, you know, the near extinction of species has catapulted into near extinction over the last few decades. And much, many of the species that we are seeing heading towards extinction are a result of the not to be criticised by the left-wing agenda, communist China. Communist China is driving the ex extinction and near extinction, endangerment of many, many species. This harms ecosystems, Greta. What also harms ecosystems are wind farms killing birds and bats by the tens of thousands. And in Germany, a so-called green group campaigned against protections for bird and wildlife in Germany in order to build wind farms. This is a, I, I, I've said the word about a hundred times in this video, sham. It is a sham. But we must indeed protect our indigenous wild species, uh, indigenous wild spaces, species and ecosystem, whilst also providing for our agricultural needs. The expansion of green belts must continue to safeguard the countryside for enjoyment, sport and recreation. We should reduce waste. Now, we must reduce waste. And we must reduce waste in terms of the amount of plastic that we use. No, I'm not against plastic. I'm really, really not. And in an upcoming column, I'm going to talk in depth about plastic. Uh, but we do have to do something. It's completely unnecessary this level of plastic so incentivization for even returning as, as the manifesto said uh bottle depots deposit program to encourage people to return used bottles in exchange for a refund Re recycling programs must be reviewed to ensure that what is marked for recycling does not end up in landfill uh yes we do and uh, while some local authorities are quite good at recycling others are not quite so good we need to we need to look at this because in all honesty the the, the you know well-meaning people go out of their way to separate their rubbish uh and and to, to sort of clean their recyclable uh, goods and go to effort trying to make a difference if that all goes to landfill anyway that's really really unfair on those people and we must look at that we must uh, also uh, look at but I'll go on to that in a second. I think it's it's next. Uh, it's coming up next. Uh, as countries like China no longer accept waste from Western countries, we need to invest in processes and technologies to deal with existing and future waste. This is really really important. It needs attention. What we do about our waste needs attention. We must reduce it. We must deal with it. Uh, we must find it a new, a more effective way of dealing with it than landfill in the short to medium term in the longer term the waste itself must be reduced we must have some we must do something we must work with big supermarkets to bring down the amount of packaging uh, do we really need you can buy a product with three or with three you can buy a product with three different types of plastic on it in very very many products you'll have two different types of plastic container and then an extra wrapper. Is it necessary? I don't think it is. We've got to look seriously at this. It's not a minor issue, but these are the environmental issues we ought to care about, not the lie of uh, the climate change hysteria. 
the the spite the um, the uh, despite the emergence of alternative sources of energy global demand for oil natural gas and petroleum products is increasing and these will remain the foundational energy sources in britain for decades to come that is the reality and it'll stay the reality because the green uh the alternate green economy that is developing simply doesn't work. Perhaps that's why the Greens like it so much, because it will actually bring down Western society. The United Kingdom produces approximately 1 million barrels per day of petroleum liquids and significant volumes of natural gas, providing 300, over 300 billion in tax revenue and the creation of highly skilled jobs for Britons. Tax and royalty revenue from this resource is vital for the government and economy. Therefore, while Britain maximises its income from the North Sea, we must also invest in technological innovations in petroleum production rather than deny the industry's existence and economic importance. It is This is so crucial, this point, and it's such an important point. We've got to get better with our petroleum our gas our, we've got to get better with what we've got instead of trying to replace it with a system that simply doesn't work and with taxing people to the hilt uh, of course i mean governments love to tax uh, but it's not so good for the people and it's particularly not good when we're talking about vital resources these are not luxuries heating your house is not a luxury having your electric on is not a luxury it's a primary responsibility of government we mustn't throw the baby and the bathwater out in order to to pander to the extreme left new thinking is needed in furthering energy security through foreign sources, Canada, the United States and Australia should be recognised as having a proven track record of highly ethical, environmental and safe standards, as well as good human rights standards in their petroleum energy industries. Brexit will afford Britain the opportunity to invest in relationships with those countries and to encourage new trade, while ending imports from countries that do not meet these high standards, including Russia, Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. Canada in particular has the third largest oil reserves in the world with the highest global standards and is well placed to answer this demand. Now here is some real commitment to ethics and to environmentalism. That is to do our trade, to trade with countries with high standards and not with countries with low standards. This is how you promote ethical and good environmental standards around the world this is this is fantastic fantastic stuff since 2008 the united kingdom's energy policy has focused on reducing co2 emissions rather than security of supply or cost that may be my favorite sentence in the entire manifesto or in the entire section of the manifesto you know, absolutely, you know, we're wasting all our time and energy on something that simply isn't real and won't provide us with the energy we need instead of focusing on how to secure our independence or, or, or certainly our lack of, a lack of reliance, a reduction of our reliance uh, as, as, as is, as where we are now and changing and securing our energy supply. Energy poverty is an issue in, uh, across Britain, resulting in upwards of 3,000 deaths during some winters. Once again, not a minor issue. Nuclear power is clean, efficient and renewable. For the carbon concerned, nuclear is clean and a way of reducing the UK's carbon footprint on a large scale. Furthermore, new reactors would create tens of thousands of jobs across the United Kingdom. We must support a thorough assessment process for new reactor designs and their siting. Through privatised power generation and liberalised electricity market, Britain must encourage major capital investment in nuclear energy. I think all of that is fairly self-explanatory, but what, what it overall means to me is that we've got to look not we've got to look at A, what we have now and make it better and not pretend we can just rid ourselves of it. Uh, to uh, to go actually cleaner if we want to go cleaner go cleaner but with reality in mind and the reality is that the 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 economic the economy the industry being pushed by the left doesn't and won't work and that's precisely why they are pushing it uh, additionally the highest 
S2 high speed rail project must be stopped and the money invested improvements to existing train and bus networks. Okay, so on to the uh, points. The, uh, what are they called? Bullet points. For Britain will invest in Britain's petroleum industry, particularly the significant reserves in the North Sea for a consistent and reliable domestic energy source. Com consistent and reliable are absolutely key here. Open new energy supply markets to import petroleum. This is what we need to do. This is really what we need to do. New markets, new thinking, new supplies. Invest in nuclear energy and a new funding model. Upgrade energy and transportation infrastructure and invest in improved energy efficiency. Withdraw from the Paris Accord and abandon unrealistic greenhouse emission reduction targets while prioritising the implementation of practical solutions to make Britain's air, war and, uh, water and land cleaner. Encourage citizens and businesses to reduce, reuse and recycle waste. Invest in small farms while discouraging agribusiness. Incentivise reduction of plastic in food packaging. Prohibit universities from barring open discussion about climate change. That uh, is across the board and was covered in our education policies and all green taxes and subsidies. Work with the motor, aerospace and process industries to develop cleaner methods of transportation and factory processing. Work to remove the highest polluting vehicles from our roads. Investigate fracking as a potential clean and efficient energy supply. Like most of For Britain's manifesto and most of our policies, what this is, is new thinking, confronting lies and putting the best interests of our country and our people first. We must confront the lies of climate change while acknowledging and working towards a cleaner, healthier environment for our people to enjoy. That is our responsibility as a government and that's what environmental and energy policy does and should do. Okay, that is the last of those from the manifesto. Do listen to my podcast this weekend when I'll be telling you all about the new manifesto and how you can help shape, shape it. Uh, see you on my live stream on Monday. Take care.